My name is Angela Santoro, and welcome to the first ever GSF Sports segment. But before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Los Gatos, California, and I went to Lee High School. I played soccer and tennis. Don't get me wrong, I love all sports, but soccer stole my heart at a very young age. That's why we're here right now at my alma mater, San Jose State, where I played four years of soccer. Angela Santoro here at the Stanford Stadium. Stanford is up 14 to zero against Oregon. Stanford got on the board late in the first quarter with a two yard run by Tyler Gaffney, followed by an early second quarter touchdown by Kevin Hogan. The Stanford Cardinal just defeated the University of Washington Huskies, a 31 to 28 thrilling victory for the Cardinal, who is still undefeated in the Pac-12. Angela Santoro here at the farm and the big game is officially over, but the big news of the night is that Stanford's wide receiver Ty Montgomery tied Stanford's all-time single game touchdown record. I'm here with San Jose State wide receiver Noel Griggs. We know how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be out in San Francisco at the Bay Area Media Day. So having a good, good morning. Awesome. Okay. So coming off of last season, I know everybody's asking you how you guys had such a successful season last year. You guys were 11 and 2, but focusing more on you, you broke two San Jose State records just in one season. The most catches as well as the most receiving yards. You're only a junior. What are you looking forward to the most for your senior season? Watching you guys over the past few years, watching you guys grow, it's been very exciting. I've noticed that it's been not just teammates, but you guys have almost created a brotherhood. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you guys have managed to do that, even throughout the times that weren't so successful? Coming into this new season, obviously last year you guys ended the Military Bowl. The news about Coach McIntyre was a little bit shocking, I think, to some of you guys. Now trans transitioning into the next season, so for the 2013 season, new coaching staff, how have you guys managed to, again, come together as a team, but also come together with you guys as new coaches? next year and the best of luck to you in your senior season as well and the rest of your teammates. Okay, thanks. I'm here with Stanford running back Tyler Gaffney. Tyler, last week's game you had 20 carries for 104 yards. Talk to me a little bit about coming off of your first spring being able to play football. How do you feel like that benefited you? So now that you guys have kind of gotten a little bit of a taste of last week, now I want you guys to get to know Tyler Gaffney off of the football field and maybe also on the baseball diamond, maybe a little bit of both. But so first, you're number 25. Where does that come from? Is that a lucky number or? Well, there you guys have it. This is Tyler Gaffney and make sure you guys are watching him all season long because not only will you guys be able to see him on a football field, but also on a baseball diamond. So make sure you keep watching the season and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Being an alma mater, what does it mean to you to be able to come out and do this and kind of give back to the community a little bit? Well, my, my coach Earl Hansen uh, asked me, told me to be here. So uh, when your high school football coach tells you something, you, you, you listen, even uh, 30, one years later. <laughs> Glad you're proud of me. I'm proud of you. Thanks, sir. Good luck tonight. What kind of effect did he have on you? You said 31 years later, you have, you're still listening to your high school coach. Has that helped you being a coach as well? Absolutely. Coach Hanson's helped me in uh, so many ways. When my family moved out here to California, I was a uh, junior, and football was the first sport I played in the fall when I first got here. Earl uh, took me in, took me under his wing, and uh, coached me, taught me, and uh, I owe a lot to him. Yeah. Uh, he's a great man, great coach. Okay, well, thank you so much. I don't want to take too much of your time, but we really appreciate it, and have, have some fun out there tonight. All right, thanks. The 2012 San Jose State Spartans finished the season at 10-2 and, and entered the spring with high expectations for the fall. However, something they did not expect would be the amount of injuries that would occur throughout their journey to and in the 2013 season. The challenging times, they really are. and and. Uh, but again, uh, every challenge is an opportunity and, and uh, for this team to, to rally, to come together and, and transcend any uh, challenges that come our way and overcome. And uh, I like our young players. Uh, we're trying to get as many reps so they get uh, experience in practice that they haven't had from, a couple, from years uh, you know, that you get as you're a veteran player. But we're bringing them along and uh, uh, you, know, you hope you don't go through many years uh, of, of the injury bug because it, it does uh, have its challenges. Amongst injuries being a challenge off the field, the coaching staff is focusing on some key areas on the field. Accountability is a big factor in the success of a program and over sustained time and uh, that's what we're demanding of our guys. When you have accountability you have 
uh, good execution. When you have good execution, you have success. When you have success, you often win football games. The Spartans have kept their heads up and are ready to get a win in conference this weekend. We got on the practice field yesterday. It was nice to get out there, sweat it out, uh, see the guys run around, shake it out of our system, and uh, know that uh, you know, football is interesting and, and sports are interesting because uh, every week you have a chance to redefine and rebrand uh, yourself as you get out there. And Despite the injuries and losing their first game in the Mount West Conference, Coach Carriger remains optimistic. The only uh, way I know how to respond is roll up our sleeves and, and get to work. I want a team that's, that's positive, that's uh, upbeat, that has some confidence, uh, but will fight to the finish and never quit, never give up. And I told our coaching staff, just put 11 fighters out there and uh, that's what I want. And I think for the most part, that's another thing. This, this team didn't quit, this team kept fighting, this team kept competing. The effort's there and that's the important thing. The Spartans face the Rainbow Hine this Saturday, October 5th in Hawaii. The start time of that game is 9 o'clock Pacific time and the Spartans will be looking to get a big win this weekend. GSF Weekly, Angela Santoro here at the very first San Jose State Spartan Fan Fest. What expectations as a fan, you guys don't understand, she is at all the games, she makes it, she's making the drive up all the way from down south, correct, to be here. So this is one of the ultimate Spartan fans in my opinion. So what does it mean for you to be able to see the Spartans have such a successful season last year? You guys did lose some of your seniors on the offense. What are you guys going to have to do differently and also with the new coaching change, what do you feel like is going to be different with the Spartans this 2013 season? The very first Spartan Fan Fest is officially in the books. That will do it for us here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the highlights from today's event. I'm Angela Santoro, and we will see you next time. GSF Weekly here at San Jose State with Sammy the Spartan. We are here for the homecoming game against the University of Wyoming. You just saw the Spartan Alumni Band, and for this edition of GSF, we are focusing on Spartan football. I sent out Edwin Wise to talk to Spartan fans about who their favorite Spartan football player is. Edwin, hanging out with all the Spartan alum big time. That will do it for us out here. I'm Angela Santoro. I'm about to get run over by the team if I don't hurry up. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. 14, third quarter. The Cowboys score right away, but the Spartans come fighting back. Great pump fake by Fails. It draws in the double coverage, leaving Winston open. He makes the recovery, and he will take it all the way in. A 60-yard touchdown. Spartans down 30-21. After a fumble recovery for San Jose State, Fails with the toss to Timmy Crawley, and he doesn't look back. His first career touchdown, Spartans down by two, 30-28. San Jose State is not done. Fails with a beautiful back shoulder pass into the hands of Winston, the first San Jose State freshman to have three consecutive 100-yard receiving games, 45 yards on this one, and a big first down. A few plays later, Fails fakes it to Lawson and rolls out and hits Shane Smith for his first career touchdown. They go for two. Crawley up the gut. The two-point conversion is good. Spartans take their first lead of the night, 36-30. Fourth quarter. A few minutes in, Wyoming starts off with a touchdown. Wick has been doing it all game long. 15 yards of the house, Cowboys back up 37-36. Next drive, the Spartans respond. Fails with a short pass to freshman tight end Billy Freeman. And look at this athleticism. He jumped over the Wyoming defender for the first down. And a few plays later, Fails finds his playmaker up the middle, Jones. His third touchdown of the night, Timmy Crawley runs in the two-point conversion. San Jose leads 44-37. Wyoming back at it. And who else besides Wick? The Spartan defense just cannot take him down. He takes it 42 yards to the two-yard line. He had 234 yards on the night with 17 carries. Finishing off the drive, Smith hands it off to Eaton up the middle, his second of the night. Wyoming ties it up at 44 with 5.17 on the clock. But San Jose State will not stop. Fourth and one, Fails fakes the handoff and goes long to Freeman. Gutsy play call by Coach Carriger, but it's a first down for the Spartans. Next, Lawson drives it up the field and is hit hard out of bounds. He had 128 yards on the night on 25 carries. To finish it off, Mr. Primetime did it himself. 
Thales with the QB sneaker. He takes it in for the Spartan win. Thales finished the night 27 of 37 with 482 yards, five touchdowns in the air, and the winning rushing touchdown. Final score, San Jose State 51, Wyoming 44. The Get Sports Focus South Bay game of the week number 10 just finished out. The Wilcox Chargers defeated the Los Gatos Wildcats 42-7. Friday night lights at Los Gatos High School. It's homecoming night and a big showdown between the Los Gatos Wildcats and the Wilcox Chargers. We start off with Wilcox just five plays into the game. Dell Sean Mitchell breaks through the middle with no Wildcats in his way. 49 yards to the house and the Chargers take an early lead 7-0. The next Wilcox possession, Alex Ortiz on the punt return. He takes to the right, cuts back to the left, comes back to the middle. Sione Finifiwaki helping Ortiz as he goes. He takes it all the way back in for the touchdown. Wilcox leads 14-0. That is Ortiz's first touchdown on the season. Los Gatos looking to answer back. Wildcats on the 10-yard line. QB Nick Bowden finds Corey Olivet out wide. He's pushed out at the one. Keegan Kreutzer fights his way in to put the Cats on the board. It is 14-7, second quarter. Wilcox with the ball after a fourth down conversion. Kenny Dipko goes long, but Los Gatos' Matt Wilcox is in the right place at the right time. The Wildcats have the ball on the 25-yard line with only 30 seconds to go. Los Gatos with a chance to tie up the game going into half. Bowden throws it deep in the end zone, but sophomore Manu Turi Turi makes a great catch to preserve the Chargers' lead. The score at half, Wilcox 14, Los Gatos 7. Third quarter, the Chargers do not waste any time. Mitchell, Mr. MVP, fly sweep to the right. He is surrounded by a sea of black and orange, but he takes off like Benny the Jet Rodriguez. He'll take it all the way home, his second of the night. Wilcox extends their lead 21-7. Los Gatos looking for some offense. Bowden, screen pass to the right to Joey Wood. Nice blocks helping Wood get some open field. He takes it down the line, cuts back inside, and is taken down at the 46. A few plays later, Wood with the ball again. It is knocked loose, and Wilcox, Julian Jones with the recovery. A big play for the Chargers defense. Following the turnover, Wilcox just won't stop. Dipko fakes everyone out in the triple option. He'll hold on to the ball and he'll take it in untouched. 54 yards to the house. Chargers up 28-7. Fourth quarter, Wilcox back at it. Finney Fiowaki up the gut, the stiff arm, and they are just having some fun out there. They'll capitalize on that play here with Dipko. Fakes the handoff, and he takes it himself. He will not look back. He had three touchdowns in the night. Those three touchdowns made up for 130 yards. The Wildcats keep fighting. Bowden drops back. Chargers putting the pressure on him. He throws it deep, and Mitchell brings in the fingertip catch for the interception. That'll do it. The final score, Wilcox, 42, lost got his seven. Because I realized I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I got to breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want.